By popular demand for our patrons, we are going to talk about setting up the star pattern today. By popular demand for our patrons, we are going to talk about setting up the star pattern today. I have this set up usually in my riding area and I walk the horses through it at the beginning, the end, sometimes the middle, but a couple of times throughout a ride, every time I ride, to help them develop core and just those spinal erector muscles up on their top line. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you need to listen to the Pain in the Spine podcast. I use a lot of things that we just have around the farm. You can also use fancy stuff. I happen to have these. Uh, you acquire random stuff throughout horse ownership, don't you? And these are one of the things I have somehow acquired. But they uh, allow you to set the pole here or here. Uh, one of the things I do find about them is they're, they're a bit flimsy for my horses that want to knock them, like Paul. Um, and so setting them up can lead to horses learning that they can just knock the poles over. So just be aware of that. But I have also used the $4 Ikea potties. There's like a potty training potty on Ikea for little kids. They're $4, they work great. They are shaped essentially like this with some modifications obviously to fit over top of a toilet. Um, but they work fantastic. They come in a wide variety of colors. They're super cool. So you can use these, you can use Ikea potties. Um, you can use 55 gallon drums. Uh, we get these from, um, Believe it or not, our nearby Museum of Natural History gets alcohol in these to preserve specimens. So, you know, think of what's in your area <laughs> that may get things in 55 gallon drums. Most feed stores will also carry them for pretty reasonable prices. The other thing that I've used this is a pole sitting on a piece of down tree. So it's a log, you know, it's a, it's a big, it's a tree like this size that fell down. We cut the log and this pole is just sitting on that log. And right now I just have one on here, but you could put, you could probably put two or three on this, this log and then you can put them on the other side. So that the horses have to walk, you know, around and walk over it with different sides of the pole high and different sides of the pole low on the side of their body. So those are some of the basic tools that we use to set it up, but be creative. It's about having one side a little bit higher and one side a little bit lower and being able to do it in both directions. That's the most important thing. From there, it's just using what you got on the farm. So here we go. to notice from that video there was no tape measure involved at all like it's really really important on this you don't really want things set at any distance because the horse has to think okay here I go here here I go here uh, I gotta think about what to do here and the other thing that you're gonna do is not necessarily stay in the same place okay so when we have the horse out here you'll see that maybe I come here on my first way and then I let her fall out and we go around here and then we get back tighter and maybe I come across this way the next time so you're not doing this like a trail pattern or a dressage test or any of those things where you're asking the horse to go in a very specific geometric pattern the whole point of this is that nothing is defined 
And the reason we're doing that is what you want is that moment where the horse has their leg in the air and they're trying to decide what they want to do here. They have to fire their core and say, okay, where do I go? Uh-oh, I have to think about this for a minute. And they have to balance as they make that decision. And you may not necessarily feel that there's that much of a slow motion to it, but what you're going for is that they have to put that level of thought into it, which requires them to fire all those muscles without you asking for it. So I'm just gonna show you the barrel real quick. If I've got one that I wanna, for some reason, pick the poles up, or if I have longer poles, by the way, these are just landscaping timbers, they're nothing fancy. I'll take the pole, put it up there. You can see that now I have a pole that is significantly higher off the ground. And so that horse is gonna have to get a little more crooked to get up and over it with that, that pole, that, that leg that's on the high side. And that's okay. You don't wanna do this with a lot of horses and you don't wanna do this a lot with any horse because this is actually asking them to do a whole lot of twisting. And that's not really something that they're designed to do, but it's a good every once in a while for a few steps to really loosen things up. Um, the other thing that you can do with these barrels, and it's actually on our list of things to do one day, is uh, this is really easy to find. You'll see it on obstacle courses a lot, like the obstacle challenges. They'll take a barrel like this, set it upright, you cut holes in the side that are big enough for the pole to slot in, and then you can slot the poles in all the way around. If I did that, well, not if, when I do that to this barrel, we're actually going to cut those holes at different heights. So not only are we going to have different spacing, we're also going to have different heights. And so that adds another layer of challenge to the horse in terms of thinking. Again, I'm not going to go one here, one here. It's more on either side of this band right here where they have to, you know, kind of think about what they got going on. So all of this is combined to just be a mental exercise. Okay, so we talked about that you can ride around the star, but you don't have to start there. And you can get a lot done just by letting them walk around it on their own. So on Vespa here, I'm just gonna let her pick her way through the pattern. And all I'm gonna say is that I need you to go this way. Try really hard, it's a little bit harder on the ground but I try not to pull too much uh, so that they can have their head to do what they want to do. And I'm going to try to back up a little bit, see if I can get her a little tighter here. There's some human coordination involved too, which is tricky as you can see as I fall. I'm not very good at the star pattern backwards. So that's, that's leading her through. And notice she, she ticked them a bit, and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You do want to make sure that you do it both directions. Uh, I'm going to get on her and show you doing her under saddle, so I'm not going to do that right now, but you do want to make sure that you spend equal amounts of time doing it both directions, whether it's on the ground or under saddle. All right, I got told I should introduce Vespa. So this is Vespa, my red-headed child. And if you've ever heard a stereotype about chestnut mares, she's it, all of them. She's persnickety. She has her own thoughts about things. And she's taught me a whole lot about riding horses. So um, also, if you haven't listened to our breeding episode, uh, you'll hear me talk a lot about why you shouldn't breed. This is one of the reasons, because I bred her, don't breed your own. Uh, the other thing about us is we're wearing boots. Uh, we do have an episode on boots. Doesn't necessarily matter to me if you do or don't wear boots for this. Uh, she wouldn't be hitting it with the front of her leg where the boot is covering anyway, so she would only be catching it with the toe of her foot. So she'll get that feedback. There's some other reasons why I think that horses should wear boots a lot of times when we're riding, uh, especially this morning we've got dew on the grass, some of that kind of stuff. But for more on that, you can definitely listen to our boots episode. Uh, so anyway, 
here we go. So, where I start is I try hard not to look at the poles, which is really difficult for me. And I'm just gonna ask her. I'm not asking hard, if you notice. I'm just saying like, hey, let's go around the poles. And mostly that is so that she makes all the decisions as to where her feet go. And then I'm gonna bring her tighter. Tighter, 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 tighter. I have to pay attention to where my body is on this as well and making sure that I'm not influencing things wrong, which I, I probably am. So I pay attention to trying to keep my inside shoulder up. So once I get a couple that she's done a good job, I've done a good job, we're not ticking things, I'll let her walk off. And then we'll come back. Maybe we'll walk over this guy over here. Do, 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 do. And this is very different, you'll notice, than for instance, like if I'm riding her, I ride Hunter Jumper, and you know, we all ride different styles, but if I'm riding her, I may be managing her a little bit tighter for, you know, if I'm riding, riding. For this, I don't want to do that. I literally just want to say, here's where you want to go. You make a decision on where your feet go. So if you have a horse that is bad about ticking them, for instance, Paul thinks that this is stupid and there's no reason for him to not tick them. So for Paul, you actually want to go to something that holds the poles a little bit tighter, like the barrel with the holes cut in it, so that when he does whack it, there's a little more feedback to it because uh, he does have a tendency to get a, bit, a little bit lazy. Vespa, for the most part, doesn't want to hit him, and she'll think about what she's doing and get better and better and better. And like I said, what this does is it's helping her curve her body, activate her abdominal muscles, and activate all of these muscles up underneath the saddle to really build her back strength. And back strength is the key to no back pain, just like it is in humans. So there you go. So the star pattern is a start, but feel free to, I call it play tiddlywink. You throw poles on the ground and you ask them to walk through it. So feel free to post a comment uh, or a video of you and your horse doing this below. We'd love to see it.